anyone who has studied Buddhism at a, at a fairly low level in terms of perhaps having exposed oneself to a, an introductory text has seen the notion of Mahayana or Great Vehicle Buddhism as one of the main branches of Buddhism. And of course, this was the branch that was developed a few hundred years after the historical Buddha and within which we saw Buddhism evolve into, in a sense, a much broader kind of religious orientation that was designed really for the purpose of helping provide spiritual guidance and potential benefits to all people, not just monks and nuns. Of course, the earlier form of Buddhism also was oriented toward helping all people, but the methodologies required within the earlier form were quite rigorous in terms of things like following the Eightfold Path that involved a lot of ethical kinds of conformities, precepts, this kind of thing, as well as, you know, meditation and, and uh, very rigorous kinds of uh, what later might be called self-power oriented practices. So in Mahayana, and thinking again about the Lotus Sutra, which I always tend to go back to, I think it was in the second chapter where it basically said that, you know, even a child at play that, you know, makes a little design of a stupa in the sand has attained the Buddha way. Well, what does that mean? Uh, it means that here we have a, a system of universal salvation. And going back to the image associated with the title of this particular branch, Great Vehicle or Mahayana, the idea was that within this type of Buddhism, we have the ideal of the Bodhisattva who makes the commitment, makes the vow that he or she will not attain their own enlightenment. They will not pursue ultimate nirvana or joyfulness for themselves until they can help all people get on board that great ship to get to the other shore, to get over the sea of suffering and get to the other shore of enlightenment. So it's a system of, of great uh, um, altruism at, at, the, at its core in terms of the idealism of the Bodhisattva path. Now, what is the great vehicle? Here I want to jump forward several hundred more years to 13th century Japan when we have the evolution of sort of new forms of Buddhism, uh, such as the Pure Land Buddhism. Of course, Pure Land kinds of practices as far as a focus on Amida Buddha or Amitabha Buddha uh, had existed for some number of hundred ye of years prior to that, but more along the lines of a, uh, a self-power oriented approach. Whereas Shinran Shonen in 13th century Japan really, to my mind, refined this Pure Land uh, approach to its ultimate degree in his particular interpretation. And one of the phrases that we hear in that regard is that uh, we hear reference to the vessel of vow power. So I want to make the point that uh, within Shin Buddhism, within Jodo Shinshu, that the great vehicle, that vessel, that wonderful uh, boat, if you will, that's going to help take all the people, all the people to that other shore is the, is the 18th vow of Dharmakara Bodhisattva. Uh, here again, we, we make reference to what Shinran referred to as the, the true teaching, which was the larger sutra on Amitabha, Amitabha or Amitayus, the Buddha of infinite light, the Buddha of infinite life. That sutra or scripture which tells the narrative of Dharmakara, who actually I think was a bhikshu rather than a bodhisattva, but the point is I think he was a king who then decided to convert to Buddhism. And in the presence of the Buddha of his day, namely Lokasvara Raja Buddha, he made several vows. He made 48 vows in particular. And Shin Buddhists put their uh, faith and entrustment in the message of the 18th vow, which is essentially that anybody that thinks upon him uh, will be reborn in his pure land of bliss, that he will not himself attain enlightenment unless he can create that pure land of bliss. And so that land we know now does exist because he did become a Buddha, and 
in that uh, in that series of vows. The eighteenth vow uh, is the the vessel the vessel that can bring us all to the other shore. That vessel is the the Mahayana. That vessel is the great vehicle. What Lotus Sutra talks about is the one vehicle, and what is the what is the essence of the one vehicle? The essence of the one vehicle is, in a generic sense, rooted back in what would be the essence of all great religious traditions of the human species. Namely, when we hear Shinran talking about what is the what are the benefits of entrustment in Amida Buddha? What are the benefits of faith in Amida? What are the benefits of accepting the reality of the salvation that's promised to us as a result of the 18th vow? Well, the first benefit is the benefit of being protected and sustained by unseen powers. And this is a great statement, I think, uh, articulating the essence of other power in contrast to self-power that for 99.99% of us, myself included, we're not capable of, you, of uh, engaging in all these self-power practices of precepts and meditation and whatnot. We can't do it. I can't do it. I can speak for myself. But there is somehow an other power in the universe. And again, different religions articulate the, the nature of this other power in different ways. We in Shin Buddhism think and talk in terms of Amida Buddha and the Pure Land. Other religions may talk about other kinds of narratives. But the essential aspect of it is this idea that we are assisted in our spiritual development and growth by uh, unseen powers. Even the Bodhisattvas in the Mahayana Sutras that are so profound in their emphasis on prajna and all kinds of other uh, esoteric and exoteric practices. It's stated explicitly in those sutras that the bodhisattvas are able to attain the things that they're able to attain as a result of the sustaining power of the Buddhas. So again, flipping back to Buddhism, uh, even though I think this phrase of this benefit does apply and can be applied to any other uh, great universal religion uh, in our in our Saha world, that um, we view the cosmos as full of these bodhisattvas and Buddhas that are there to help us, to sustain us, to give us strength in our time of despair. And it's interesting in this regard that I pointed out to some friends of mine, some Dharma friends recently, that the time speaking personally, when I have most been in touch with a sense of being sustained, being assisted, a sense of firm entrustment in that other power are the times in my life when I've felt uh, most stressed, most challenged, most downhearted. And so uh, there is a correlation there, I think, to uh, how we feel in terms of <laughs> has our ego been uh, knocked down enough uh, for us to be in touch with the humility that says, I can't do it on my own. I really can't uh, make it. And so uh, here we go uh, toward uh, a different kind of approach, approach of entrustment and where we simply are led to say in gratitude, Namo Mita Bolts. Namo Mita Bolts. Namo Mita Bolts.